Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now a gaming phone is traditionally characterized by having the best performance available at the time it's launched, having a fast display with a high refresh rate, having a really big battery so you can do lots and lots of gaming on it, and having some kind of active cooling so that you get more than you would in the kind of a standard flagship smartphone. Well, the Red Magic 3S has got all of those and a few other tricks up its sleeve. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the Red Magic 3S is the successor to the Red Magic 3. Now, Red Magic is the gaming phone brand from Nubia, and Nubia itself is a sub brand of ZTE or ZTE, depending on how you pronounce it. Now, it comes with a Snapdragon 855 Plus processor, at least 8 gigabytes of RAM. There are options for even more RAM than that. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It has a fan for active cooling. You can actually turn on a fan inside the device for active cooling. You get dual speakers, and there's also 8K video recording on that 48 megapixel Sony sensor. And on top of that, it has a full HD display with a 90 hertz refresh rate. And because it's a gaming phone, there are a few more extras, most notably a gaming mode switch, which you flick over and it brings games front and center onto the launcher. And there's also some trigger buttons on the very top. In fact, they're not buttons, they're capacitive keys that you can use to actually help you play games. So let's start with performance. As I said, Snapdragon 855, at least eight gigabytes of RAM, an option of 12 gigabytes of RAM, and all the games I was playing on it, and I gave it also to my two sons to play on it as well. Absolutely no problem playing Fortnite and PUBG and Asphalt 9, all those big, heavy games that you can get for Android phones. It handled them all seamlessly. I'm also flashing up on the screen here some of the benchmark numbers if that kind of thing interests you. And also don't forget to stay tuned to the Speed Test G channel because I will be publishing a video showing the Red Magic 3S running my test suite. So the Red Magic 3S is truly a gaming phone and it does include a special game mode switch, a little red switch on the side that when you flick it, you get moved into a new launcher that really just shows you the games that you have installed. All your emails and Instagrams and social media just disappears. It's games front and center. And there are also various controls that you can use there. Some of those we'll go into in just a minute, but one of the important ones, you can kind of mute all your notifications so you don't get disturbed while you're getting your latest high score. And when you're in that game mode, you can also turn on and off the fan. Now, if I do have one minor complaint about this device, it's that you can't turn the fan on and off while you're in the normal launcher, only when you're in game mode. But when you're in game mode, you can have it on permanently, or you can have it kind of on an intelligent setting, which means it will come on when it starts to get a bit warm. Now, also stick around to this channel, because I will be publishing a video about the sustained performance of the Red Magic 3S because of that built-in fan. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you know when I drop that video. But until that video comes out, the fan does seem to make a difference. There is an internal temperature display, and when that fan is turned on, the temperature does not climb as rapidly or as high as it does, of course, when the fan is turned off. Now, of course, playing 3D games can really eat into your battery life. That's why this device has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. That's very large for an Android smartphone. And of course, there is also an 18 watt charger, so you can very quickly charge it up. In fact, if you do charge it up from 10% to 50%, take about 40 minutes. To go from 10% to 80% takes about an hour, and to go from 10% all the way up to 100% takes about one hour and 45 minutes. And that's normal for smart charging systems. That last 20% does take a much longer time. Now, according to my testing, you can get about five hours of intense 3D gaming out of one charge on the Red Magic 3S. Or you can get about 14 hours of like watching YouTube or Netflix. So you've got five hours at one extreme, 14 hours at the other extreme. And of course, depending on your usage, you're going to get different levels. But if you think about a couple of hours of playing games, you can watch a whole movie. You can certainly spend two, three hours doing social media and you're still going to have battery life 
have to spare. Now, if you don't play many of only games, particularly 3D games, you may even get two days of battery life out of this, but you're gonna have to be careful. But full day battery life, absolutely, even when you do a bit of 3D gaming. Now, a couple of the other gaming features worth mentioning. One is there's a special connector on this device, a proprietary connector, but it allows you to connect some devices and peripherals that you can get from uh, Nubia for the Red Magic line, including a special dock that will allow you to kind of have ethernet connected into it via wired ethernet so you get less lag when you're playing games. Also allows you to charge the device while you're playing games and so on. And there's also a mini kind of joystick pad thing that you can stick on the left hand side that connects through a, a protective case. But if you're not gonna add any of the peripherals, what you do get is those two trigger buttons at the top of the device. Now they're quite interesting because I wondered, well, how are they going to work? Do you have to have a game that specifically supports those triggers? And you don't, the way it works is this, you can define on the screen where you want those triggers to simulate pressing or tapping the screen. So you basically move around some little red dots and then whenever you press the trigger buttons, those areas on the screens are used. So for example, if you're playing Asphalt 9 and you want to use the drift and the kind of the nitro boost, you can set the two triggers to be that area and then you can play the game by having your fingers up at the top of the device and not actually on the screen. Now there is one feature they include which does require support from the games and that's the kind of the 4D vibration support, the haptic feedback that you can get in a few games and when you're playing it the phone will vibrate at the right moment as your car or your character is doing something uh, that would warrant the vibration like that. On the screen now is a list of games that currently support that mode. Now before we get onto the camera, one other thing to say, it does have this LED strip on the back, which kind of you can turn on and off and kind of make it do different patterns and different shapes. And there also is a mode to connect it to the music, so it kind of, uh, kind of flashes or moves in synchronous to the music. It's good when you first see it, you go, oh wow, look at that LED strip, that's something novel. But the novelty does quickly wear off and I found myself not even bothering to look at it. Particularly since it's on the back of the device, you're concentrating on playing a game at the front, so you're not even looking at the back. It really is for other people to see and doesn't really affect your experience of using the device. So it has just one camera sensor, which is a little bit disappointing considering what else you get in the flagship marketplace today. However, at least it is a 48 megapixel Sony sensor and it does have some interesting functions. So basically, uh, I found that taking pictures with it is mediocre at best. Sometimes it's lacking in kind of color and saturation. I'll show you here some pictures as I'm talking of the different things that I took around where I live here. So as you can see, okay pictures, nothing to write home about. Maybe if you tweak them in some kind of editing program, you might be able to bump up the colors or kind of bring out the contrast, highlight the shadows, whatever it is that you want to do with those pictures. So from that point of view, if you're an avid photographer and you're also an avid gamer, this device isn't gonna do what you want. If you're an avid gamer and occasionally you take the kind of a, a photo or a snapshot while you're out and about, then this camera will be absolutely fine for you. There is also a front-facing camera, which again has something like a, a beauty mode on it. And I found that switching that off actually gave you better results than having it switched on. Other than that, again, mediocre, okay, nothing to write home about front-facing camera. However, having said that about the camera, there are a few interesting features. So let's look at a couple of them. First of all, there's 8K video, which really is an amazing achievement. You can record 8K video on a smartphone. Now, there are some caveats. First of all, it's only 15 frames a second, which means it's not gonna be smooth, particularly if you're filming, you know, football or a sport or soccer or whatever you want to call it or you know kids running around in a park or your friends on a skateboard or whatever it is that you're doing it's not going to capture that action very well the second problem of course is you probably haven't got any way to check that 8k video because what are you going to play it on is your telly an 8k television is the display on here an 8k no it's not so you've got this 8k file but then what do you actually do with it so actually it does also support full HD and 4K recording, and both of those at 60 frames a second. Now that's a much more attractive proposition, and also it has some very good support for both H.264 and H.265, so that is a really good way of actually uh, creating video files from this phone. And I found that the, uh, the 4K and the 1080p video was good, but again, that lack of saturation, the lack of punch in those videos seems to be the same as they are in the photos. 
There is also an interesting slow motion mode. They actually call it super slow motion. They're claiming 1920 frames a second, 1920 frames a second. Now I've recorded with it and I've kind of done some maths and I think it's 960 frames a second. I don't know whether that's a typo, a miscommunication or whatever, but even so it is a very good slow-mo um, feature. However, you're limited to two seconds. Two seconds at 960 frames a second, four seconds at 480 frames a second. However, the most impressive thing I saw in terms of the camera for this phone was the night mode. So I've got some pictures here that I'll show you of taking uh, in the day a normal dusk kind of getting towards dark and then switching on the night mode, you can see a really big difference. So that night mode really is actually quite good. So if you do take photos and you do a lot of it in the evening or in the nighttime, then actually this could be uh, not so bad. Quickly mentioning audio, the dual speakers are good. They actually do work as dual stereo speakers. And that can be quite interesting in some games, particularly if they kind of can show you what's to the left, what's to the right, you can hear gunshots or you know screechings or whatever it is that's going on in the game. But, and also it does work on you know watching Netflix, watching YouTube, so that's all good. Though of course, if you are into gaming like that, or you are into watching movies and TVs online, then of course, a set of headphones will always give you the best quality. Now, a couple of negatives to say about this phone overall. One is it is big, 6.65 inches, diagonal across the display. So that's bigger than even kind of like the Note series from Samsung. So if you've got small pockets or you know, you're always, you know, you kind of person that things fall out of your pockets, then you need to be very careful with this device because it is gonna be more uh, easy to drop it or for it to fall out onto the floor. However, if you carry a bag, if you've got a coat with big pockets inside of it, then that's not gonna be a problem, but you need to be aware of it. Also, it does have a very gamified design. You can see here on the back, you know, the, all the highlights and the straight lines and all like that. So this really has a very particular kind of design language to it, and you may like it or you may hate it, and there's not really much you can do about it. So you need to take that into account if you are thinking of buying this device. Two other things worth mentioning, no NFC, which is a bit disappointing, and no micro SD card slot, so you can't extend the internal memory at all. Let's just quickly mention the price. It's $479 or 479 euros. So you are getting all of that, triggers, fans, Snapdragon 855, eight gigs of RAM, and all that kind of stuff for under $500, stroke under 500 euros, which in my book is a pretty impressive price point. Okay, so there you have it. There is my quick review of the Red Magic 3S. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I will be dropping that sustained performance video about this device. Also, don't forget to check out the Speedtest G channel because I will be posting a test run of this device over there. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.